Hello, this is Abby from OllieHolly.com. In this video, I will be showing you how to make a basic dog snood, not including these extra bits. I love making snoods for my dog Ollie. They keep his big floppy ears out of his food and they keep his ears warm on extremely cold winter days. I like to make him fun snoods by sewing different crocheted shapes onto a basic snood. The method that I'm going to be showing you today is something that I have been working on for years. The shape created with this method fits a dog's head better than a square snood or a tube shaped snood because the measurements allow you to tailor the snood to better fit your dog's head. Before we get into the tutorial, I just want to go over a few disclaimers. I cannot guarantee that this will work on all dogs. If you plan to make this, you should fit it onto your dog as you are working on it to make sure that the snood fits. Also, we took some time to train Ollie to wear snoods when he was younger. So he associates snoods with positive attention and treats. And please make sure to keep an eye on your dog when they have their snood on. Do not put snoods onto your dog for long periods of time or on very hot days. When making your dog snood, the first thing to figure out is what type of yarn you want to use. Acrylic is cheap, so it's usually a good option for dog snoods. It's also stretchy, so there's a little bit more wiggle room when working with acrylic. You can also use cotton blend yarn. Cotton blend yarn is less stretchy than acrylic, so your measurements will need to be spot on. Snoods made with cotton blend yarn will be a little bit cooler for your dog to wear. The next thing you have to figure out is what weight of yarn to use. I prefer using heavy worsted weight yarn because it's not too bulky, but it's also thick enough that it works up faster. The size of the hook you use will depend on what weight and type of yarn you are using. For worsted cotton blend yarn, I like to use a 4.5mm hook. For worsted acrylic, I like going up a hook size because acrylic yarn stretches and it's easy for the tension to get too tight. For this video, I will be using Loops and Threads Impeccable Yarn, which is a heavy worsted weight acrylic, and a 5mm crochet hook. Now that my materials are sorted, let's talk measurements. Different breeds of dogs have different shaped heads and necks, but for the most part, all you're going to be creating is a hood with a collar. With your dog in a seated position, take the following measurements with a tape measure. A. The length of your dog's neck. B. The circumference of your dog's neck. C. The length of your dog's nape, which is the back of the head. And D. The circumference of your dog's face, going from under the chin around the top of their head and meeting back at the chin. I've included Ollie's measurements as an example. With these measurements, we can now start crocheting the snood. The first part that I'm going to be working on is the collar. The measurements I'm using are A, the length of Ollie's neck, and B, the circumference of his neck. The length of the collar will depend on the breed of your dog. Dogs with shorter necks, like corgis, will need shorter collars. Starting with a slip knot on my hook, I'm making chains until my chain is the length of Ollie's neck. I'm going to chain 10 here, and then compare it to my other snood. If you are new to crochet and would like to learn, I have a crochet for beginners tutorial on my channel and I'll link it in the description box down below. Now I'm going to measure the height of my chain against an existing snood. You can measure yours with a ruler. Surprisingly, the 10 chains worked out really well because it's exactly how tall the collar for Ollie needs to be. So because I like the length of my chain 10, I'm going to add one more chain because I'll be skipping the chain closest to my hook and working into the second chain from the hook. So this is my first chain from the hook and this is the second. I'm inserting the hook into the middle of the chain and out the back. Then I'm going to yarn over and draw up a loop. 
there are two loops on my hook. Then I'm yarning over one more time and I'm drawing it through the two loops on my hook. I'm going to continue working one single crochet into each chain. So after finishing my first row, from now on, what I'm going to do at the end of each row is that I'm going to be turning my work. When turning, make sure that the working end is towards the back. So you're turning this way to make sure that the working end ends up towards the back. Another thing I'd like to note is that I do not like to chain one at the beginning of each row, because I find that doing so creates a really jagged edge. So since I'm not making a chain one at the beginning of the round, I'm going to just turn my work and work straight into the previous row. This is the orientation I had it in for row one, and I'm just turning it to set up for row two. Now from this point on, the rest of the rows for the collar will be worked in the exact same way. I'm going to be working into the back loops of each stitch. So I'm inserting my hook into the center of the stitch and out the back. Then I'm going to work a regular single crochet stitch. I'm going to keep working into the back loops of each stitch until I get to the end of the row. So just to note, I know that this looks very tempting to work into, but it's actually part of the foundation chain. To double check, you can count your stitches to make sure that you're on the right track. Then I'm going to turn my work and repeat the same steps until I get a strip that measures to be about 2 or 3 inches shorter than measurement B, or the circumference of the dog's neck. Make sure to keep track of how many rows you are working. You should aim to have an even number of rows. Another thing to note is that because I'm not chaining one at the beginning of each row, the final stitch of each row is going to curl backwards a bit. It's going to be a little bit tighter, so just do your best to locate the stitch and wiggle your hook into the back loops of each final stitch. This stitch here is the final stitch of my row. And this is the back loop of the stitch. If you're finding that you're having a hard time working into the stitches, it probably means that you are crocheting a little bit too tightly. You could help with that by crocheting a little bit more loosely or by sizing up your hook. Now that my collar strip is about 3 inches shorter than Ollie's neck measurement, I'd like to show you why I'm stopping at this point. Ollie's neck circumference is roughly 14 inches long, and currently I'm at 11 inches. Because I use acrylic yarn and because I've been working into the back loops only, this piece is actually quite stretchy. When making your dog snood, you'll want to make sure that this piece isn't too loose or too tight. But also, because of the forgiving nature of this stretch, this measurement does not need to be perfectly exact. Wrap the piece around your dog's neck to make sure it's not too loose or too tight that it's getting too stretched out. As you can see, I was at 11 inches, and with a light tug, I can get it to 14 inches easily. When you get to the length you are happy with, double check to make sure that you have an even number of rows. There is one row to either side of each spine. My piece has 40 rows. Now that my strip is long enough, I'm going to connect the two ends to create a tube. Just like before, I'm going to turn my work, but instead of only working into the back loops, 
I'm going to line the other side of the strip up to the side I'm currently working on. Then I'm going to insert my hook into both loops of my stitch. So not just the back loops, but both loops. And into the first corresponding chain on the other side of the strip. If you're not sure where that is, you can count the number of chains to make sure. This chain here is the corresponding chain to my stitch, so I'm going to insert my hook into the chain as well. Then I'm going to work a slip stitch, so I'm yarning over and drawing it through all of the loops on my hook. I'm going to repeat that with the rest of the stitches, so I'm working into the next stitch and the corresponding chain. Then making a slip stitch. As you can see here, working the slip stitch along the ends creates a spine that looks similar to the rest of the collar. Now that I have my collar, I'm going to start working on the hood. To start, I'm going to be picking up a single crochet into the side of each row of the collar. So because I have 40 rows on my collar, I'm going to pick up 40 stitches around the edge of the tube. There really isn't a specific spot that you have to crochet into on the edge of the tube, but it does help to know where the rows are so that you are picking up the stitches evenly. Each indent here that you see has one row to either side of it. Before I start crocheting into the edge, I'm going to chain one to lift this first row of the hood up a little bit. So I'm going to work into the edge of that first row by inserting my hook into any gap that I can find as close to the edge as possible and picking up a single crochet stitch. Also, to save myself from having to weave this tail in, I'm going to sandwich it into the back of my single crochet stitches by laying that tail onto the edge of the tube and crocheting over it. I'm going to place a stitch marker on my first stitch so that it's easier to see on the camera. Then I'm just going to continue picking up single crochet stitches around the edge of the tube, making sure to sandwich that tail into my single crochet stitches. Now that I've finished the first row of my hood, I'm going to turn my work and just like before, I'm not going to chain one at the beginning of each round because I don't want that jagged edge. Instead, I'm going to just work one single crochet into each stitch. After finishing round two, I'm going to start working on my first decrease row. From this point on, I'm going to decrease my row by two stitches anytime I'm working on the right side of the snood. So that's the odd number rows when the outside of the snood is facing you. This is the inside or the wrong side of the snood. So every time I'm on the right side, I'm going to be decreasing the row by two and I'm going to be focusing the decrease stitches towards the middle back here 
to create a rounder shape. So I'll be decreasing to create this more natural head shape. To figure out what your pattern is going to look like for the hood, you will need to do a little bit of math. Don't worry, it's simple. I'll use Ollie Snood as an example. I have 40 stitches and I'm going to be decreasing the 40 stitches by 2 to get 38 stitches. So first, I'm going to divide the number of stitches I have by 2 to determine how many stitches are on each side of the hood. So 40 divided by 2 is 20. And because I'm going to be working one decrease stitch onto each side for a total of two decreases for the row, I'm going to subtract 2 from 20, which gives us 18. So this means that I'm going to be working 18 single crochet stitches, then decreasing in the next two stitches. And then when I'm working on the other side, I'm going to work a decrease stitch, then work 18 single crochet stitches. When you add it all up, you'll see that I've successfully decreased my stitch count to 38 stitches. To give you another example, let's say your dog is a little bit bigger than Ollie and you have an initial stitch count of 48 stitches because your collar has 48 rows. Take the number 48 and divide that by 2. You'll get 24. 24 minus 2 is 22. So you're going to work 22 single crochet stitches, decreasing twice, then work another 22 single crochet stitches. So just make sure to keep track of how many stitches you have each row so that you can do the math the next time you work on the right side. So now I'm going to work the first 18 single crochet stitches from my pattern. For my decrease stitches, I like to do the invisible decrease. So I'm inserting my hook into the front loops only of the next two stitches, drawing a loop up through the two front loops, yarning over and drawing it through the two loops on my hook. So I just made one decrease stitch and I'm going to make another. After the two decreases, I'm going to work one single crochet stitch into each of the remaining 18 stitches. For the next row, I'm going to just turn my work and work into the wrong side of the hood. Anytime you are working into the wrong side of the hood, you will be making one single crochet into each stitch. There's no decreasing on the wrong side. Continue working the decrease rows until the back of the hood measures to be the length of your dog's nape. Ollie's nape is 4.5 inches long, but because I'm using acrylic yarn, I stopped at around 4 inches. Before moving on to the next part, it is a good idea to fit the snood onto your dog to see if you're on the right track. From this point on, anytime you are working on the right side of the hood, you will need to decrease the back of the hood by 4 times instead of 2. Doing so helps to round out the back of the hood more drastically to help shape the top of the hood. For my snood, I currently have 28 stitches. So I'm dividing 28 by 2 to get 14. Then, because I need to decrease 4 times in this row, I'll need to decrease twice on each side. So 14 minus 4 is 10. This means that I'll be working 10 single crochet stitches, decreasing 4 times,
then working 10 single crochet on the other side. Continue decreasing the right side rows by 4 stitches until the front opening of the hood measures to be half the circumference of your dog's face. This is what the measurements of your snood should be like by the time you are done. Before sewing the top together, fit the snood onto your dog one more time to make sure that the sizing is correct. If the opening for the face is too short, work a few more rounds making sure to decrease by 4 when working on the right side. When you are happy with the shape and the size of the snood, cut the working end of the yarn and fasten off. Thread the yarn tail onto a darning needle and fold the hood in half. Whip stitch through both sides of the piece to close up the top of the hood. So because my tail is on this side, I'm going to be inserting my needle into this stitch and out the corresponding stitch on the other side. Then I'm inserting my needle into the next stitch and out the corresponding stitch on the other side and so on. Make sure the tail is wrapped over the top of the hood. Now that I've gone through the final two stitches, I'm going to thread my needle into the wrong side of the hood. Then I'm going to weave the tail in to secure. That's it for this basic snood tutorial. If you are looking for simple ways to customize your dog's snood, please check out the blog post on my site, ollieholly.com. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!